This is one person's futile attempt to protest the signing of Article 50 by Theresa May on March 28th. It is funny though, and anyone that has a longer version of this, please contact me immediately. Now this is also a good metaphor for how I feel about most of the railing against the injustice of YouTube's recent ad boycott by large corporations. Now it's not that I don't empathise, this is hitting me extremely hard as well, but there's just not that much you can do about it. And as I said in my last video on this topic, I chose to do this YouTube thing full time. I chose to expose myself to the fickle mistress that is YouTube. And so it's up to me to diversify my income stream. And I'll come back to what I'm doing to try and diversify a little later. So if you want to know who's behind the ad boycott, who the main players are, who stands to gain and who's trying to get a piece of the action, I recommend you watch Sargon's video if you haven't already. But I'm going to talk about what I know, which admittedly isn't very much, and what my personal situation is. So much of the reason for this kind of feeling is that YouTube doesn't tell you a whole lot. But let's look at what they actually have said. We recently posted a blog explaining how we're addressing strong feedback from advertisers around ads running on content they feel does not align with their brand. Advertiser confidence on YouTube is critical to the financial success of creators. Unfortunately, in recent weeks, we've seen some advertisers suspend their campaigns. So earlier this week, we began implementing the new brand safety controls outlined in the blog. So let's have a look at that blog. There's a difference between the free expression that lives on YouTube and the content that brands have told us they want to advertise against. Now, this is not an insignificant point. YouTube is not restricting your ability to say what you want to say. You can still criticize and satirize. You're just not going to get paid for it. After listening to strong feedback from our advertisers, today we announced a number of actions and we want to explain what these changes might mean for you, our YouTube creators. Tougher stance on hate speech. Both creators and advertisers are concerned about hate speech and so are we. To protect the livelihoods of our creators and to strengthen advertiser confidence, we'll be implementing broader demonetization policies around videos that are perceived to be hateful or inflammatory. This includes removing ads more effectively from content that is harassing or attacking people based on their race, religion, gender, or similar categories. Similar categories? Well, what would they be? Why don't you list them? So basically, any type of criticism. And again, you can make the criticism, you're just not going to get paid for it. Strengthening advertiser controls for video and display ads. In the coming weeks, we will add new advertiser controls that make it easier for brands to exclude high-risk content and fine-tune where they want their ads to appear. Fair enough, companies will get more control over where their ads appear, but is this actually necessary? I mean, let's say Coke is able to exclude ads from any type of video that is critical of a certain group or individual. Do you not think that people who watch and like those videos not drink Coke? How much of your customer base are you willing to exclude? Who knows, maybe Coke just wants to exclude graphic violence. I have no idea. Now the other measures are immaterial. Accelerating the appeals process, making minor efforts to protect creators by deleting impersonation channels, and the platitudinous commitment to diversity. Now back to the blog. If you're seeing fluctuations in your revenue over the next few weeks, it may be because we're fine-tuning our ad systems to address these concerns. While this can be unsettling, we're working as fast as we can to improve our system so that advertisers feel more confident in our platform and revenue continues to flow to creators over the long term. What can you specifically do? If you're monetizing your videos and seeing a drop in revenue from videos that are being monetized, review your videos, thumbnails, titles and descriptions to ensure they accurately represent the content in your video and are aligned with the advertiser friendly content guidelines, which are again are so vague they could exclude anything. I mean, take the last one, controversial or sensitive subjects and events. What is a sensitive subject? People think of events like terrorist attacks, but given the climate of snowflakery, quite literally anything could be considered sensitive. Now the second part talks about demonetizations and the appeals process. And as I said two weeks ago when I made a video on this, I've only had one video demonetized and that was an old live stream that nobody watches anyway and doesn't affect my revenue. So how has it affected me? Well, two weeks ago, I said this. Now I did notice a drop in revenue, but nothing of the sort being reported by others. 
And that's not true anymore. Now, instead of just saying my revenue fell X percent, I thought I'd show you a more objective way of measuring the fall. Because obviously some days you get more views and total watch minutes than others, especially when you put out a video as opposed to a day when you don't. So what I did to compare over time was reduce my revenue to two basic measures, revenue per thousand watch minutes and revenue per thousand views. And as you can see, they tell basically the same story. So using revenue per thousand watch minutes, you can see in January it starts out at a very low base. Now that's because in early January, advertisers drastically reduced their advertising budgets because they spent up big in the run up to Christmas. And then you can see it starts to pick up towards the latter half of January and continues into February and March. And now you see here on March 25th, this is about the time the shit hit the fan and revenue drops significantly but recovers the very next day. And then on April 1st, it plummets again, hangs around that level for about five days and then plunges again. So if I take a simple average of my revenue per thousand watch minutes for the month of March, it comes to approximately 49 cents. And the reading on April 9th is 10 cents. That's a drop of 79%. And that, my friends, given the relative small size of my channel, is almost certain death as a full-time YouTube creator. Now, as I said in a previous video, I reserve the right to hit the panic button, but this is not that moment. This is me now, and this is me panicking and I'm not at the panicking stage yet. So the reason I'm not hitting panic stations just yet is because from what I can tell, every type of content creator out there is getting hit. Take this guy for example. He just makes original music videos with his bass guitar, and he has over half a million subs, and he just made a video about getting smashed with his YouTube revenue. In this same YouTube help forum, it seems all kinds of content from people who upload sports clips, education channels and games are all getting hit. So I'm not hitting the panic button just yet, but nor do I think hoping that things will return to normal is a viable strategy. I enjoy doing this, and recently my channel views have picked up. I'm bringing in more than 100 subs a day, which is good considering my relatively small size, and I've attracted 20 more patrons just in the last two weeks. I have over 100 extraordinarily generous individuals who patronize this channel with their hard-earned cash, and that is extremely rewarding. But YouTube still makes up the bulk of my revenue, so in my ongoing attempt to diversify away from YouTube, I want to shill some new additions to the Independent Man Shop. Now, by shopping at the Independent Man Shop, not only do you get to support the channel, but you get a little something in return. So in addition to all the wonderful t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, and tote bags, now we're offering you at the Independent Man store a range of fabulous hats and caps, from trucker's hats to baseball caps. I mean, look at this range. Can you believe it? Now remember, if you want to make the logo bigger, no problem. We can do that. And look at the range of colors. Are you shitting me? We've got one for every occasion. Feeling like going out for a midnight run? How about neon yellow? Not your style? How about something a little more subtle? Black and teal. Or how about my favorite? Heather gray and black. And don't worry, you can change the color of the logo to suit whatever mood you're in. And remember, if you're not ready for the full independent man experience, go incognito style. I mean, what's the difference between this and a New York Yankees cap? Absolutely nothing. I defy you to tell me how these are different in any way. And if some smartass actually says something, just tell them that this is the Yankees' new logo and they're just testing it out. It's in beta. So you better get in and get one now before they go mainstream and double the price. Look, you need to ask yourself this question. Do you want to be a trendsetter or a trend follower? Do you want to be a lion or a sheep? I know what I want to be. How about you? You know what you have to do. Buy at least three hats. But wait, there's more. How about a knitted cap? Now, I know winter's over in the Northern Hemisphere, but it's never too early to stock up for next year. And down here in Australia, where I live, it never gets cold enough to wear one. But you could just wear it like some teenage wanker who thinks it's a fashion statement. Now, how about something for that special lady in your life? 
Well, the I Am Shop has it all. Check out these aprons, since she's going to be spending most of her time in the kitchen anyway. Or maybe that's not your style. Get one for that special man in your life. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But again, look at the vast array of colours and designs. There's something for everyone. Now we've also got mouse pads, water bottles, and how about dogs? That's right, dogs. What other YouTuber sells dogs? Can you believe it? This is not some mangy, diseased rescue dog either. This is a full pedigree dog with all the papers to prove it. It's not a dog, dickhead. It's a bandana. Oh, what's that? It's a bandana. Well, we've got bandanas. Now, I have to level with you here. I don't really like people who dress up their pets. They kind of make me sick, to be honest. But when your YouTube revenue's down nearly 80%, I'd probably sell crack to a baby at this point. And anyway, you don't have to put the bandana on your dog. You can put it on your head like these celebrities have chosen to do. So as I said, it's not panic stations yet, but if you need a new cap or an apron for the missus, get down to the I Am shop and get yourself some gear. You know you want to. And don't forget to take a picture of yourself and send it to independentmantalks at gmail.com and you'll be featured in an upcoming video. And I'll see you next time.